Well, good day YouTube and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino and we're looking at a beer that was sent to me by Liam. That was brought to him by his daughter. So, uh, thank you for thinking of sending me something that your daughter brought you up. It really does mean something to me that people think of me and go, Hey, I would love to see the Rhino get to try this. So thank you very much. Uh, this is... Did you hear that? I apologize for that. Bodily function, can't help it. Uh, this is from Whitefish, Montana. A craft beer from Whitefish, Montana. Uh, this is the Great Northern Brewing Company. This is a Going to the Sun IPA, which is an India Pale Ale. No, really? And it is 5.5% alcohol by volume. Uh, there is the label. So my second beer from Montana. And my second beer from Montana was, is from the same brewery as my first beer from Montana. What the hell is that on the label? It looks like a... looks like... almost like Snuffleupagus or something walking around. I don't fucking know what that is. Is that Montana? My geography is not the, uh, not the greatest, but it's also not the worst. So, yeah. And we'll put this up here, because it might have to go on the fridge. Behind me is fridge, over here is punter bucket. The punter comes to me, and he goes, Hey, Rhino, I have a, uh... I have a craft I'm doing. I need bottle caps. <laughs> he came to the right guy, buddy. And he came here a few days ago and uh, to do a review night. And I hand him a bucket with like 600 bottle caps. And he's like, what the fuck? That's way too many bottle I'm like, you ask for them, take them the fuck out of my house. Um, yeah, beautiful orange color. Wow. Almost like a burnt orange. Crystal clear though, I can see my hand even out here wiggling around. Little little white head just, just across the top of the beer. I don't even think we can really agitate much more head. Let's just check. A little bit. We go to like half a finger if we agitate it. Smell? Okay, now, his daughter picked this up for him. And then he sent it to me. And I've had it for about two and a half weeks, maybe three. So I don't really know the age on this bottle. And it doesn't look like it has a date on it, to be honest with you. Um, and the only reason I bring that up, 50 IBU, unfiltered. Okay. The only reason I really bring that up is, uh, just look one more time. Sometimes it's in, like, black laser etching that's almost unreadable. No. Okay. The only reason I bring that up is either all the hops are faded to an extent, or this is just one of those IPAs that I don't personally think I'm going to like just off the nose right away. Because it's very syrupy, very syrupy and sweet. Yeah, very syrupy and sweet with a little bit of roasted roastiness. So syrupy, sweet, roasty, and a little just resiny. It doesn't actually smell like pine or anything like that, it just smells like bitter. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of the old... Of the old bottle of, uh, oh, what was it, Torpedo, um, Sierra Nevada Torpedo, uh, and I hated that beer, but uh, under, uh, just to be honest with it, I had bought it at a grocery store, not at a real bottle shop, and uh, once I found out it was Citra Hops, and I know how much I personally like Citra Hops, I, I was able to pretty much date how old the bottle was um, by the flavor. So I'm, I'm just bringing that up, um, because the smell of this reminds me of that. Cheers, let's try it. Oh, 
Okay, you know what? I don't dislike that as much as I thought I was going to, to be 100% honest. Um, I actually thought I was going to hate it, <laughs> to be fully honest. I thought I was going to hate it. And um, that smell just reminds me of all the IPAs I don't like. But tasting it, it actually kind of works. Um, back end, a little roasty, a little toasty, and a little bit of just a uh, caffeine pill bitterness. No really, no real fruit, at least off the first sip. No pine, nothing like that off the first sip. Maybe something will come up, but right now it's kind of just like chewing on a caffeine pill mixed with a mixed with a roasty toastiness right on the back. The forefront, caramel and butterscotch. Um, I know a lot of people find butterscotch to be a brewing flaw. I seem to be pick up butterscotch in a lot of things with Cara Pills and, and Cara Munich and stuff like that. Uh, uh, butterscotch to me isn't as much a brewing flaw as movie theater pop butter pop butter topping. That I think is the diacetyl for me. Uh, when I taste butterscotch, I just think it's a, uh, I think of a very sweet, maybe under attenuated, uh, under attenuated malt flavor. So medium bodied, smooth across the tongue, low carbonation, caramel and butterscotch forefront, roasted toasted back end with a caffeine pill resiny bitterness and the caffeine pill resiny bitterness is so low that it just tickles the back of my throat it doesn't take over the back of my palate which actually makes me really enjoy this beer in all honesty i i'm a fan of this i i can't say anything bad about this beer i i am a fan of it i well i can say that i didn't like the smell but other than that, I'm a fan of the beer. So thank you very much, Lee, for sending this out. Thank you very much to his daughter for picking it up. I greatly appreciate both of you. Um, thank you to the great Northern Brewing Company in Montana for brewing this beer and giving me the chance to try it. Uh, out of 10 on the beer, and if anyone from the great Northern watches my videos, uh, for me, I'm not really... Sometimes I'll rate you via, via style if I think you deserve an extra point. This one, this one I don't think really showcases the style amazingly. It, it might do a good job here and there, but I mean, there's just so many IPAs out there now that the, excuse me, that being something that fits either, basically you're either trying to fit the style or fit a personal taste. Maybe this is the taste of an IPA in Montana. Maybe this is a Montana IPA. I mean, there's Ontario IPAs, there's West Coast IPAs, East Coast IPAs, there's Maritime IPAs. Everybody has a different IPA, and that's perfectly fine. What I'm going to say is, for me, this is probably worth a 6 out of 10. And before anyone gets up in arms, if this is your favorite beer or this and that, for me, my rating system does go on whether or not... Not just what I think of the flavor, but do I think the flavor is enough that would make me want to go out and buy it again, personally? I'm at over 3,800 reviews now. Does this stick out enough that I'd want to buy it again, personally? No. But is it a bad beer? Again, no. I actually enjoy it. It's quite nice. So a 6 out of 10 is, if somebody else bought it, I would have absolutely no problem putting it down with them. Um, I have no qualms with it at all. I just don't think I would pay my own money for it. There's other things that I would buy before it. That being said, what do you think of it? If you do see this beer out on a shelf, well, go ahead and buy it and try it. Every single beer out there you should try personally. This is just what I feel about it, and maybe it can be taken as a guideline, maybe it can't, it all matters. There's enough videos out there that you can see if we have the same type of taste profiles. And if we have the same type of palettes, Maybe you'll feel the same about it. If our palates are vastly different, which is very plausible, then maybe you'll like it a lot more or dislike it a lot more. It all matters. So go out and try it on your own and let me know what you think. Two beers from them. 
they've both been pretty solid. So thank you for watching. Au revoir, y'all. See you soon. Bye-bye.